Hi, I'm Anne. Some of you may know me as Anne of All Trades, and I have my own YouTube channel and Instagram account that focuses on a lot of antiquated traditions, hand tool woodworking, blacksmithing, homesteading skills, and a whole lot more. Today I'm going to talk to you about my very favorite tool, the low angle jack plane. I'm going to go through how to set it up, how to sharpen it, how to use it properly, and talk about all the various jobs that it can perform. So how can this tool actually be a jack of all trades where it's a scrub plane and a finishing plane? The simple answer to that is that you just have two different blades. And for me, having two different blades for this one tool has made it universally useful. Now let's take a second to talk about what it is that sets the number 62 low angle jack plane apart from these other tools and also how it can emulate those tools. The first thing is that this tool just has a whole lot less parts than these tools do. If there's one thing that I like to emphasize with young or inexperienced woodworkers, it's the uh, importance of having the ability to as eliminate as many of the variables in your work as possible. So if something's going wrong, you can easily hone in and isolate what it is that's going wrong and fix it. One of the simplest differences between this tool and this tool is the number of moving parts. This tool has a frog. It is possible that it could be cocked laterally, which would cause you all kinds of problems. You could be having problems with your lateral adjustment. You could have problems with your back and forth adjustment there. Your blade could be too thin. Your chip breaker could be crooked or set improperly. Your lever cap could be set too tightly or too loosely. There are so many things that could go wrong with this tool. Plus the very fact that there are so many moving parts in this tool causes you issues if you are young and inexperienced and you're kind of have a tendency to knock the tool a lot around a lot in its use. If you just bump the tool or you set it down too hard or you ram into the cut over here, you're actually going to change the setting of the tool. So you could have spent 20 minutes setting this up so it would cut the most perfect gossamer shaving but then if you set it down too hard one way or another, you would have completely messed up that setting. The cool thing about this tool is that it has very few moving parts. Once you have the blade in the tool, it's bedded directly down to it and without an extreme bump or drop, that blade is going nowhere. So you can get your plane set up properly. If you have a misfire here or there, you can still be pretty much assured that you're going to be making the same cut 15 minutes from setting the plane up that you were when you first set it up. The other thing that sets this tool apart from these older tools is that these tools have the blade bedded on a frog at 45 degrees with the bevel of the blade pointing down. Because of that, there is a straight edge being presented to the work when you're using the plane to cut. The only way that you can change the angle at which it cuts is by physically raising or lowering the blade. To do that, you would have to have a different frog to physically raise or physically lower that blade. In a bevel up tool, the bevel is what is being presented to the work. So if you want to change the angle at which your blade is cutting your work, then you can just sharpen a different angle into the blade. But the last difference between these tools is the ability to open and close the mouth. On these traditional style planes with a frog, the way that you open and close the mouth is by loosening these two screws and then tightening the screws down at the, at the back of the frog to move it forward or backward. Now that's a bunch of extra tools that you have to get out and a bunch of extra steps to be able to do a operation that if you only have one tool is going to be extremely cumbersome as you move through the different planing exercises. Whereas with a low angle jack plane, you can simply twist the handle, open, shut, open, shut, change the adjustment of, or change the depth of your cut, and you're good to go. And the final thing that makes this a jack of all trades is the size of the tool. This is incidentally the same size as a jack plane in the traditional style, and you'll notice that it's kind of the middle size between the smoothing plane and the jointer plane. So if you have a very short plane bed, for example, like in this tiny little cutie, there's only this much material keeping your chisel away from the cut. So it goes, it stands to reason that this is going to be a fantastic tool to get into those little tough spots that you really can't get into any other way. Now, if you're using a huge long plane, like the jointer plane, 
then you have this much material keeping your, your chisel away from the cut. So where this tool really shines is, the, is its length. You're using this tool to joint your wood, to make it straight along its length. And so it stands to reason that you would have a long registering surface here and a long registering surface here, but that long body is also going to disallow the blade or the chisel and the jig from following the hills and valleys of your work. So when you're trying to make a perfectly square surface, this is the tool that you go for. But when you're trying to get a very smooth surface that just is nice along its whole length, but squareness doesn't matter, that's when you want these really, really short plane bodies. I mean, that's why a smoothing plane is so much shorter than a jointer plane. So where's the happy medium? Here we are in the jack plane. So this tool gives you enough length that you can really trust it to be able to square up your wood nicely, but it also has a little bit of a shorter body so that you can actually trust it too to be able to follow those hills and valleys when it comes to the finished planing of your wood to leave a very nice, beautiful surface as well. And the fact that this one tool can either augment or replace all of these other tools as well. Here's what a typical piece looks like when it comes into my shop. And so I'll kind of just give you a little example of what the scrub plane is going to do. It's going to remove a ton of material in a hurry, but it's also going to leave a really scooped surface. And I'm gonna to have to be really careful that I don't plane away too much from a certain area. If I wanted to remove a ton of material in a hurry with the jack plane, I have two options at this point. I have the option of just opening up my mouth and seeing how the plane's cutting with just its regular blade, because here's the crazy thing about the low angle jack plane, is that I've found that with a nice sharp blade, you can pretty much cut any surface very well with this tool. There are only a few times when I need to actually go ahead and change my blade. So at this point, I would, yeah, be pretty tempted to just open the mouth of my plane, wide it up, loosen my lever cap just ever so slightly and take a, a more aggressive cut with the tool. And if I'm not experiencing a whole lot of tear out, all the better, I can just remove a bunch of this material in a hurry. And now as the grain's getting revealed, I'm also realizing that I may need to turn the piece of wood around. Now, if I'm taking big old shavings like that, I'm gonna need a little bit of lubrication on the bottom of my plane, so I'm gonna grab some beeswax or some mutton tallow and just use those to lubricate the bottom of my plane so it will slide across the wood fat better. And here we're getting a, an actually finish ready surface just from that nice sharp blade even though we have a wide open mouth there. And now let's just take a look at what the tooth blade would do. Well, one of the coolest things about these low angle jack planes, both the Lee Nielsen and the Lee Valley Veritas versions, have what's called a toothed blade. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically act like that, like that scooped feature of the scrub plane by taking little cuts all at once. But the coolest thing is that because it's toothed or serrated in that way, those little t cuts don't continue to scoop if, there's, if it gets caught on some curl or some tricky grain. And so what you end up doing is making a graded looking surface, but it's going to be a surface that's completely flat and then it only takes a few strokes of a regular plane blade to clean that up. The other really cool thing about the tooth blade is that you sharpen it just like a regular plane blade and tons of people really struggle getting the camber ground and sharpened correctly on a scrub plane. But a tough sharpening job is never a reason not to use a certain tool. So once we've removed all that material, it takes just about, it just takes a few strokes with your other straight blade to get it back to a surface that's completely finished ready. And I'll just take a little minute here to talk about proper planing technique. You'll notice that this bench is very low. This is actually a hand planing bench. It's set up for me to prepare material and it allows me to be 
above the workpiece with the ability to use gravity to my advantage when I'm hand planing wood as opposed to being up here and being forced to use all of my upper arm strength. So here, hand planing is a core exercise. I am actively engaging my core. I'm trying to use my entire body to uh, move the plane as opposed to just pushing it with my arms like this. I have my dominant foot forward, my dominant hand forward, and I'm, yes, am guiding and pushing the plane here, but your pressure needs to be here. And so you'll notice that with every plane stroke, I am bringing the blade fully off the workpiece and registering here before I even begin my stroke. That ensures that I'm not, you know, going like this and just being all crazy with my hand plane strokes, which is going to leave an uneven and out of true surface. Stanley actually made a low angle jack plane and number 62 in the Stanley numbering system. And the concept was good, but the execution was actually pretty poor. The castings were too thin, the blade was too thin, the machining wasn't great, so it didn't quite work the way that it was supposed to be. It was what I would like to call a tool-shaped object. And the Stanley number 62 is a collectible item today because they're fairly rare. Why are they rare? Because they didn't quite work the way that they were supposed to be, and so they didn't make very many of them. Now, while a lot of vintage tools are going to be significantly more affordable than their newer options, and you can tune them up and make them work great as they are, I really suggest that if you're going to get a low angle jack plane that you invest in a good quality one and you buy a new plane. My two favorites are the Lee Nielsen and the Lee Valley Veritas. And there are other companies that are making them, but they require a little bit more work out of the box. And what you're paying for when you buy a higher end tool is that some of that work has already been done for you. If you're buying a new plane and this is in fact your first plane, it's really, really helpful to start with what I would call a gold standard tool from the get-go so that you know and understand how a tool is supposed to work. And I actually got my start in this whole woodworking industry restoring antique tools for folks. And it wasn't really until I had purchased my first benchmark tool that I really understood how these older tools were supposed to work. And so if there's one area that you really should spend some money and invest, I would definitely say that it would be a great investment to buy a low angle jack plane. So why do I keep calling it a low angle jack plane? Who's jack? Well, it's a jack of all trades. And generally speaking, I am not a big fan of tools that do every job. The Stanley number 55 is an example. It's a total joke. But this tool actually is a jack of all trades and really does a good job at what it's supposed to do. And so we're going to explore that more in this video. There's a couple things that need to happen to get this ready to use. And one of those is closing up the mouth. Um, and that's the mouth of the plane. That's the opening here between the bottom of the plane sole and the front of the plane sole and where the blade projects out the front. You want just a slightly larger mouth opening than the shaving that you intend to take. And this is probably one of the single most awesome features about this tool is that the mouth opens and closes with the simple turn of the knob. The mechanism works a little bit differently on both of these tools. The Lee Nielsen has a little lever adjuster and the Lee Valley has um, this little screw that you can put in and out based on how far you want that mouth to, like basically a stop. Um, and so I'm going to close this mouth up ever so slightly. So why do we want to be able to change the opening of the mouth? A hand plane body is basically just a jig that holds a chisel. It's what's making sure that the chips are stopped ahead of the cut and so on and so forth. So without the mouth of the plane to stop it, this chisel is going to, as we push this chisel across the wood, it's just going to want to continue to dig further and further into the wood because, you know, there's nothing stopping it from not doing that. And so the mouth of the plane basically keeps it so that those chips don't continue to get deeper and deeper ahead of the cut. And then the body of the plane basically keeps this so that it's cutting at exactly the same depth along the entire cut, which is obviously impossible to do with just without a plain body to hold it. So once we have the mouth of the tool set properly, we need to set the blade as well. So 
So what I like to do is I like to put the blade forward until I can see it looking down the tool, and then I want to retract it until it just disappears. Throughout this process, I'm going to continue to inch the blade forward as I use a scrap piece of wood to test and see how far it's projecting. So once I've got the blade position all sorted, I want to tighten the lever cap, not to a Herculean amount, but you don't want that thing to scoot around when we're using the tool. And this is also a great opportunity to just double check your mouth opening and to scooch it back ever so slightly if it needs to be scooched. That looks about good. Now let's take the tool to some wood. Here we are getting really nice shavings. A nice sharp blade and a nicely set up tool is going to give you a whole lot of success. And even on that really curly walnut, we get a fantastic finish ready surface from the plane set up this way. I mentioned earlier in the video that my favorite of the newer low angle jack planes are the Lee Valley Veritas version and the Lee Nielsen version. So what are the differences between the two? Here they are. The Lee Valley Veritas obviously looks a little bit different. Lee Valley tools are a lot more sleek and modern looking, whereas Lee Nielsen tools are designed to be replicas of their older historical versions. The Lee Valley Veritas version is significantly heavier than the number 62. And so in my own shop, this is the one that I end up gravitating towards a lot more. If we're talking about an eight hour day where I am using this tool for the majority of that eight hour day preparing stock or planing stock, that weight difference becomes a whole lot more noticeable. That said, that a ton of people prefer more weight in their hand tools. And I think that that's why Lee Valley went with a heavier model is that if you really are using this for the majority of your planning purposes, then that extra weight, that extra gravity pulling your, your blade down into your work is going to be a huge benefit. And for someone who doesn't have as small a frame as I do, I can 100% see that being the benefit. The other major difference actually is the tote size and the, the, the grip size. Once again, I have very, very small hands, so I tend to gravitate towards tools that more comfortably fit my hands. But that's just my personal opinion, and these are both fantastic tools and an excellent value. Should you choose to not like using a low angle jack plane, both of them are going to hold their value incredibly well, and you can resell them on Craigslist or on eBay. But as much as I love cutting straight grain cherry, the real test of whether a plane can actually do every planing job or not is on some extremely curly violin back maple. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any other questions about the low angle jack plane or hand tools in general, please feel free to head over to my channel, Anna of All Trades. Cheers.